Hello, as you know, my name is Daniel Fernandez. I'm the owner of sciencinghydroponics.com. And today we're going to be doing a video about how to prepare a really concentrated micronutrient only solution that you can use for your hydroponic nutrient solutions. So in the past videos about hydroponic nutrients, we have prepared A and B solution, where the A contains mainly nitrates and the B solution contains phosphates, sulfates, and all the micronutrients. However, you might have seen that this is inconvenient given that the weights of micronutrients that we need to use are quite small, and given the scales that we normally have access to that are cheap, it is really hard to weigh these things accurately. So a solution for this is to, instead of preparing one to 100 solutions, where we use 10 milliliters per liter, we can prepare one to 1,000 solutions, where we actually use only one milliliter per liter. So this is a very concentrated micronutrient solution that we can use to prepare more accurately and to only prepare a small amount and then be able to use it for a really long time. So, in, in this video, we are going to be using the same salts that we used before. We are going to be using sulfates, and we are also going to be using the chelating agent disodium EDTA that we used uh, during the last few videos about this. We're also going to use benzoate, a significantly larger amount, because these will contain more micros. And something that we haven't used before, we are going to be using vinegar as part of the solution. Why vinegar? Well, because it's easily available, all the acetates, or so all the uh, acetate salts of all of these micronutrients are soluble. So we can actually use uh, acetic acid or vinegar as part of the solution in order to lower the pH because we don't have any acid phosphates. So this helps us lower the pH. Sulfuric acid would also work. Phosphoric acid would also work, but I would not recommend using it because of insoluble phosphates that might eventually uh, form. But acetic acid is a fairly um, easy thing to use. However, it is worth noting that because this is a source of carbon, this does demand a lot of use, the use of a lot of additional benzoate to make sure that this thing doesn't spoil. So let's prepare it now. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is put a magnetic stir inside the beaker. And now the first thing I'm going to add is approximately 50 milliliters of this white vinegar, which is 3.5% acetic acid. This is so that we set the pH from the very start. Now the first salt I'm going to add is the ferrous sulfate, because this is the one that contains the most impurities. It's the one we add the most of, and it's the one that takes the longest to dissolve. So I'm going to add it and you're going to see that it's going to be basically white because of all the impurities it has. So I'm going to give it the longest amount of time to dissolve among all the salts. Now the next thing I'm going to add is the chelating agent, which is the disodium EDTA, and this should help the ferrosulfate dissolve. Now I am going to be using a small beaker for this addition because it is substantially more volume. So it's 7.2 grams, so it's more mass, but it's also a lower density substance. So it is substantially more volume. So I needed this beaker to make this addition. So you can see here I'm weighing the 7.2 grams. And now I am going to transfer this to the beaker. I use some distilled water, of course, to transfer everything, and sure, I get all the mass there to our final solution. I changed the flask there because that flask stopped working, so I have a new flask now. Now we're going to start adding the other micronutrients, so we're gonna go with the manganese now, the manganese sulfate. This one dissolves fairly easy, easily, it is a higher purity one than most, so you get it at a usually better quality than ferrous sulfate. So I am going to be adding this one now. Next, I will be adding the <clears throat> copper sulfate. Copper sulfates are generally really high quality, so even if you use a low cost copper sulfate, it will usually dissolve very easily. So I am adding it now and it changes the color of the solution to this like teal color. 
Next I'm going to be adding the boric acid. The order of addition is not so critical at this point. Um, so I'm just choosing this order. Uh, the boric acid also takes long to dissolve, so I try to um, not pick big pieces of it, but just like uh, try to grind it before I put it in. Now I'm going to be using the zinc sulfate. Uh, the zinc sulfate I have uh, is probably not the best sulfate. This zinc sulfate is usually also, it also usually contains a substantial amount of impurities, mainly iron based impurities. So that is also something to take into account um, now I am going to be adding the uh, benzoate I believe yeah so I'm going to be adding the sodium benzoate this is way more than before so we're going to be adding 400 milligrams around 400 milligrams of the sodium benzoate this is as I explained because we have the acidic acid which is a source of carbon so I'm going to weigh almost um, well, a little bit more than 400 milligrams. It is not important to be precise with the sodium benzoate. Around 400 milligrams will be enough to ensure there are no microbes. Now that everything has been added, I don't have sodium olibdate, but it is included. You should add it if you have it. I didn't have it for this uh, specific demonstration. I'm adding more distilled water so that I can get everything to dissolve. 200 milliliters uh, here. Of course, below the 250 total, I will be taking the solution to. Now, as you see, it never gets very clear because of the impurities in the sulfates. So it is always a little bit cloudy, but it gets clear enough. Now I'm going to add two dyes. I always like to add a lot of dye to these super concentrated micronutrient solutions. So I do not confuse them with other solutions that might be green or red. So I always add green and red to make it like a brown color. And this very strong brown color that's almost black, it's very hard to confuse with other solutions. So this helps me avoid using this um, without when I'm not intending to. Now I am just washing the um, stirrer, transferring everything from the beaker to ensure everything gets to the final solution. There are a little bit of insoluble impurities and I am also transferring those so that I get absolutely everything to this final solution. These impurities are because sulfates can be pretty low quality. So Unless you recrystallize the sulfates, you will almost always need to filter the solutions afterwards if you are making uh, sulfate micronutrient, sulfate-based micronutrient solutions. Now I'm taking it to final volume, homogenize, and this will be the final micronutrient solution. Now I have here um, this jar where I'm going to store it, so I'm purging this jar with some of it to ensure that uh, I'm not contaminating the solution with anything that remains inside the jar and I am pouring it here and of course we have here a label to put there although because of the dye it is hard for me to confuse with other things. So we have now prepared a 1 to 1000 solution of micronutrients. This is very highly concentrated with this solution we can prepare, these are 250 milliliters, we can prepare 250 liters of final solution. If you prepared one liter of this, you would be able to prepare one cubic meter of nutrient solution. So this is very efficient. However, since this is prepared at one milliliter per liter, or basically 3.8 milliliters per gallon, this means that your accuracy in the addition needs to be very, very good or otherwise you might add excess of micronutrients pretty easily. So this is why I usually have, whenever I prepare these high concentrations, I usually just tie a syringe to them and then I just use this syringe to make additions because this makes it uh, much easier to do. You can use higher capacity syringes to make accurate additions to larger volumes, but in general, when you do these one to 1000 concentrated solutions, your accuracy needs to be really good because if you add instead of one milliliter per liter, 1.1 milliliters per liter, you'll have 10% more micronutrients than you want, which is, can be problematic given how sensitive plants could be to some of these uh, nutrients. So, I hope you enjoyed this video and please remember to like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one and bye bye.